Hello, I'm uh, Dr. Abraham Weisfeld speaking here. I'm going to be speaking about the pandemic, with the COVID-19 uh, coronavirus pandemic. My qualifications, I should mention, are uh, begin with a scientific education, a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Waterloo. And uh, because uh, of various factors, uh, I transferred to the political science departments and completed my master's at uh, York University in Toronto and then did my doctorate in political science at the University du Québec à Montréal here in Montreal, Montréal, Quebec, Canada. Now, I have been campaigning for a program of immunization to deal with the pandemic. This derives both from my scientific education and my political uh, social implication. The factors which uh, lead to this conclusion of an immunization campaign or treatment derive from an approach which I would call uh, social biology. That is, the treatment of uh, medical conditions not on an individual case-by-case -case basis, as is presently the case, even within what's called socialized medicine here in Canada. You know, individuals are treated by their doctor one at a time for their specific conditions without uh, consideration for the uh, necessary social conditions to overcome the medical conditions which affect any particular individual. Now, the reason why we need an immunization campaign are varied. Let's start off with the current conditions. The current facts are that we have had a pandemic ongoing for 10 months, which has led to uh, a number of, uh, of people who have uh, recovered from the, uh, from the viral infection. On a world scale, there was presently, which is the 25th of October 2020, the world has had 40.9 million cases of infection. The number of recovered has been 28 million, and the number of deaths has been 1.13 million. Now, if we were to calculate the, uh, the rate of uh, mortality on a world scale, when uh, practically you know everyone will have been infected, then we were talking about seven billion people, which, uh, in proportion to uh, what has happened presently, there will be 176 million people who die. Now nobody talks about this, certainly not the politicians, not the doctors, and not even the scientific uh, personnel. But this is the uh, course on which uh, we are being led to right now. Why? Because within 10 months of the pandemic that we have endured now, we have had a 8% convalescence of the population, generally speaking. So 8% of the population is now convalescent. They have been infected. They have overcome the infection with their own immune, immune system. and. Uh, this gives an 8% rate of convalescence within uh, the societies that have been affected. Now, to achieve uh, generalized immunity in the population, we're talking about a 60% rate of uh, convalescence. This is uh, six times the 10-month uh, period in which we have endured already. You know, if we consider that, you know, uh, if we round it out, you know, 10% convalescence rate, then uh, if we want to achieve 60% uh, uh, convalescence, that's six times what we have endured presently. So we would have to endure the pandemic for another 60 months or five years. Now, nobody mentions this either. So let's continue to consider the strategies of coping with this pandemic by necessity. Now, the, okay, let's first start with the possibilities of a vaccine. 
there are various efforts to form a vaccine. And, uh, you know, these efforts have been ongoing since the first uh, appearance of the coronavirus. The coronavirus has made its appearance twice before. There's the MERS, M-E-R-S, and the SARS, S-E-R-S, uh, versions of the virus that have occurred previously. And, uh, of course, you know, uh, uh, the research for a vaccine has been sought, you know, for each of those uh, outbreaks of the virus. And there has been no vaccine that has been able to be developed for those previous uh, uh, varieties of, of the coronavirus. Now, to say that there's going to be an easy, uh, you know, an early, you know, vaccine available is uh, something that is not backed up by the previous um, research trajectory. There are various efforts, there are various vaccines which are being tested right now. There's two in Russia, there's uh, one in the United States, there's uh, another in England, etc., uh, etc. Et now, what is the function of a vaccine? A vaccine is, takes a, the virus itself uh, and impairs it in some way so that it cannot uh, become infectious and by linking into the cellular structure of the human cells, by basically, you know, chopping off its, its spikes, the spikes with which it connects to a cell and injects the virus into that cell, which then uses the cell's mitochondria to uh, duplicate itself. This replication is done through the uh, channel of the spikes. Now, if the spikes on the virus are chopped off, and the spikes and the virus is introduced, you know, without the spikes into the human body, then pr probably the immune system of the body will recognize the virus in any case and produce antibodies to fight it off. Now, what if the immune system cannot recognize the virus properly and doesn't recognize the virus as the original virus? Then it's producing antibodies for a virus that does not exist. One problem with the vaccine. Two, what if the antibodies which uh, are produced by the vaccine create secondary effects such as inflammation because the immune system is put into overdrive when there is no virus and so the antibodies begin to attack the human cells itself. That's another problem that can occur with the vaccine. Now, there are other unknown factors as well. Uh, in terms of political economy, you know, the various governments have promised billions to the pharmaceutical companies to pay for the virus, which, are, which is uh, a, a private commodity, which is being held in, in private corporations, which are going to demand you know, to be paid for it by the governments, that is, by public funds. And the, uh, the question is how to overcome these uh, limitations and these uh, secondary effects and the fact that the vaccine doesn't exist. It's, they talk about uh, this vaccine being available in the next year, but the pandemic is here and now. And the vaccine is not known to be operative as well. So let's talk about what we have on hand. We have 28 million people who have recovered from the virus infection. These 28 million people, uh, in the months uh, following their uh, convalescence, contain the both uh, antibodies that are the uh, emergency urgent antibodies called IgG, capital G, second one, and then that allows the body to, uh, you know, uh, develop a antibody specific for that virus, which is called IgM, capital M. And, uh, and therefore, the person is immunized against the virus, strongly immunized against the virus in the coming months after their convalescence. Now, the uh, antibodies do not necessarily stick around, that is the IgM ones. They're the long-term antibodies. The IgG ones are the short-term ones. But the IgM antibodies will stick around for a certain uh, time 
and perhaps uh, are uh, indefinite. Uh, so far, the uh, immunology uh, of the person, the immunization of the person against uh, the uh, reinfection has been prolonged. And it might very well be you know, prolonged for an indefinite period of time. In fact, uh, there are cases in which it has been found that those people who developed antibodies as a result of the SARS or the MERS infection still have a certain immunological uh, defense system against the new virus, the, the COVID-19 virus. Now, even then, the body will develop T cells, which is like a template, so that if the IgM antibodies decline, the T cells, the template cells, are there ready, knowing the pattern for the IgM necessary antibody to counteract the uh, viral infection, so that if the person uh, does become infected again, the uh, antibodies are ready, willing, and able to be reproduced by way of the T cells to create the necessary immunization of the person so that they can fight off the virus if the initial antibodies decline. And so far we find that the antibodies do not decline. Immunization is a prolonged immunization. <clears throat> and furthermore, the T cells uh, guarantee that the uh, antibodies could be reproduced by the body quickly, not having to wait for the IgG, uh, but creates the IgM antibodies right away. Now, The reason why, okay, now, the alternative, of course, is masks, uh, social distanciation uh, in French, uh, social distancing, uh, and uh, isolation, even uh, amounting to a lockdown again, uh, which leads to a general uh, economic collapse and also uh, generalized um, mental uh, discomfort and uh, mental illness on a endemic scale. So how to avoid that, even though it may be necessary at certain moments in order to avoid the uh, saturation of the hospitals, which would then have to leave people to die in their homes, how to overcome these constraints? The way in which one can become immunized or become immunized by means for the purpose of prevention of becoming infected in the first place is available. And in fact, it is being used to some extent. It is not being publicized though. For instance, in the United States of America, there are already 70,000 people who have been treated with convalescent plasma. What is convalescent plasma? Convalescent plasma is the part of the blood that contains the antibodies, the uh, yellow serum in the blood, which is separated from the red blood cells and becomes yellow as a result, and which is transfused into a patient to uh, cure them of the infection and may actually be used to transfuse into a patient who has not yet been infected by the coronavirus. So, it is a preventative treatment and very powerful. Uh, and it doesn't have any secondary effects because the antibodies are patterned to combat the particular virus that we were dealing with and not with any variation of it, not with any dumbed down version of the virus, but the actual virus itself can be treated by the IgM antibodies that are created in order to stop this particular virus. They're available. They're available in the blood of the 28 million people who are already convalescent. So. For the uh, convalescent person to provide uh, a donation of their blood, uh, they, uh, there is a machine in China, which I saw a picture of, which takes the blood from the person and separates it from the blood plasma immediately and uh, transfers the red blood cells back to the person in the first place so that the person doesn't even lose their red blood cells, which they don't even have to regenerate. And they sort of just walk out of the treatment center and they have, you know, as a result, you know, provided a donation of the convalescent plasma, which can then be transfused into another patient who's either sick or who is seeking to become immunized so that they do not become sick. Now, 
it seems reasonable. It is being used. It has been approved for as a treatment by the FDA, Federal and Drug Administration of the United States. It has been approved for testing by the Pasteur Institute in Paris. It is being used in the National Health Service of Britain already. And the last report that I heard of, which was months ago, on Al Jazeera, 5,000 patients a week are being treated by convalescent plasma in England. In the United States, the Mount Sinai Hospital is using this treatment. And 70,000 patients have already been treated. And there is no reports of any uh, secondary effects or uh, undesirable effects. So this is a proposal for the a social biological treatment of the population at large as a strategy to overcome the pandemic. Now, if this plus plasma, the 28 million worldwide is available and people are being infected at a rate that is n not more than, uh, let's say, uh, you know, a million uh, a week, then, you know, the uh, convalescent plasma can be used to treat the the population so that the pandemic can be reduced immediately to a nominal state. This is mass immunization that we're talking about here. Now, the cost per person of such a treatment is certainly uh, uh, something to take into consideration. And uh, it's also a factor to be calculated when we want to consider the uh, the available uh, social uh, uh, health uh, sanitary facilities that are available to do so. And the uh, personnel, the social personnel who are, uh, uh, you know, working to uh, heal the people who are infected. And uh, one wonders if there's enough personnel, doctors and nurses, and technicians, and laboratories, and the machines necessary to isolate the plasma. All of this is limited, too limited. Now the money should be going into the personnel and the equipment necessary to make the mass transfer of the antibodies to those people who need it and who do not want to become sick. Now these billions of dollars necessary for this procedure are instead being held back in reserve to pay for a vaccine that may or may not work in a year or two. So. If people knew about the choice involved here, which should we expect people to support? Which people uh, will support you know, a vaccine that doesn't exist and may have secondary effects? And who will support you know, a program of immunization that is immediately available with no secondary effects? Obviously, you know, convalescent plasma immunization treatment is the desirable treatment both by those people who are seeking to avoid a lockdown, both by those people who are disturbed immensely by the lack of social interaction, or even those people who find, you know, wearing a mask to be suffocating, even though it has nothing to do with the intake of oxygen itself, but it's merely uh, a device which protects from the gobulates of people who are coughing, or those people who are breathing with their aerosols, which contain the virus as well. It has been found. So all of these discomforts can be overcome with convalescent plasma. So I'd like to uh, tell you that I have an article that was published in the, uh, the Gaza Post of Palestine uh, proposing such a treatment. And uh, it is both available in English and French, and I can make it available to you if you wish by email. And you need only contact me at the email address, which I will give you now. S A A L A H A at F O K U S dot N A M E. So you can stop the video and replay it in order to get the information, or I can just tell you that it's S A A L A H A at focus with a K dot name. Salaha at focus dot name. So, again, this is uh, Dr. Abraham Weisfeld speaking to you about the campaign for immunization by mass strategy of convalescent plasma uh, treatment for the transfer of antibodies for mass immunization, mass immunization, 
and for the treatment of those people who have become ill already, so that uh, we need not have to suffer the projected 176 million people who could be dying, you know, after a prolonged you know, exposure to this pandemic on a world scale. Thanking you for your attention. And uh, I will now make another video that is dealing with the questions of uh, the uh, social uh, consequences of the pandemic, which are severe as well. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.